Hi, this is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report. It's a bird. It's a plane. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to the Krypton Report. The All Things Kryptonian podcast, including Superman and Supergirl. We discuss games, movies, cartoons, TV shows, and comics. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Welcome to the Krypton Report, this all special news episode because there's lots of things that have happened in a short period of time. And James and I were like, dang, we should just talk about this. We hope to get back to our regular scheduled programming of comics reviews and Legion review next week with hopefully another special episode. But you never know. You know why? This is life. This is podcasting. And it's... What it is, you know, schedules, people. But let's have some fun. What's going on, James? How you doing? Uh, not a whole lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> rewatching Titans. Uh, uh, reading Three Jokers. Got book three today. Awesome. Um, Junia, my I, beautiful wife, sat I've here. I've only cracked it, so I've only read like two pages, so... The lovely Jania sat there on the couch in front of me yesterday, looking ever so beautiful and lovely, just sitting there in her bathrobe and PJs and towel-wrapped head, reading Three Jokers. Mm, What a beautiful sight. Just a woman Uh, reading comics. Um, I have read it. We're going to talk about it. Um, I like getting her perspective, and we'll hopefully we'll have our Three Jokers episode um, next week, and we can break into that some more i feel like we need to reread it yeah after, after you read it we need to like read it again and let it digest a little bit more so oh, yeah read it read it as a whole um yeah read all three books back to back yeah like uh, it, it just so i um well after brian's uh episode uh discussing his thoughts after after he read book two um, I had to go back because I had never read the Detective 27 anniversary issue from the New 52. And, mm. uh, I mean, I only cracked it, but I made sure to read the first story, which was the Chemical Syndicate, which was based on the first story uh, in Detective 27 back in 1939 mm. when Batman first appeared. It's, it's so, definitely a read or a reread. It's one... Um, that we'll probably reference and have a discussion. But here we go. Let's get into this. I know you got things to do. I have things to do. Children that need to be put to bed. Yes, we're recording a little bit early this evening, which yeah, is nice. It is nice. So recently, Michael B. Jordan has come out and said that he is going to produce a static shock movie. Cool. More property, more diversity. Um, you know, not the same thing over and over static shock, a character that I'm very unfamiliar with. I know a little bit just because, um, the justice league unlimited episode that he appeared in, but I was never, I never got to watch the series because it was at that time when my life had just changed, you know, out of school, uh, working, no constant schedule no cable network changes you know i think it was on kids wb but it felt like kids wb uh-huh. was hard to find um so yeah i know static shocks the character people are championing to appear on black lightning so cool you know <laughs> yeah um i mean i've heard that uh, uh uh jefferson was a mentor to uh, uh virgil from who is static shock And I only ever caught the show in passing um, for Kids WB uh, around the times because it was around the um, Justice League time and the um, reruns of Superman and Batman, um, those things. So I caught the show on and off. But, yeah, most of my knowledge from him comes from where he's in the Justice League cartoon. So that's something to be positive about. And I look forward to whatever comes our way. Next thing, jumping over more towards the movie universe. um, David F. Sandberg 
put out a little thing talking about the villains of Shazam 2. And it's basically going to be like a version of the three sisters. The weird sisters, the wayward sisters, um, you know, the Greek fates. In a lot of ways, sometimes they are used as um, they are literary characters as well as mythic characters. Um, they're, you know, referenced in Macbeth and Shakespearean writing. And it seems like it's going to be some sort of version of them as maybe not the only villain, but a villain in Shazam 2. Or villains, technically, you know, they're collective, but that's cool. I think diversifying Shazam more than just being, who Shazam fight? Black Lightning. Who else? Dr. Savannah. Who else? Mr. Mind. Who else? Reboot. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I'm sure, I'm sure there's been, um, uh, I'm sure there's been uh, uh, plenty of, mythological i mean because that's where his magic comes from i'm sure there have been plenty of mythological uh villains that shazam has faced over the years yeah and you know what i'd like to go back and read some old shazam slash captain marvel because technically i mean we got that new 52 run and then it, it crossed into justice league you know, and then he was like in a little bit in the Trinity War, and then he kind of started after Trinity War. He kind of disappeared. Like I don't even really remember him in Forever Evil, or Rebirth, or anything. Um, he didn't really pop back up till the Jeff Johns run reappeared, and it was kind of a sequel to his New Fifty Two run. And in other fun movie news, the Suicide Squad has graced the cover of Empire Magazine. It looks awesome. Like, it's cool to see them all together. And if nothing else, it's awesome just to see King Shark. Like, it, it slightly sucks that he's digital just because of the impressive makeup they did with Killer Croc. But it's just awesome. And, I, you know, I, I would hope that we – I just would really love the voice actor from Harley Quinn to do the voice because that's become my King Shark voice now every time I see him anywhere else. Like that's that's what made me love that character on Harley Quinn so much. Um, yeah, Ron Funches was hilarious. Just his his sweetness and like it's gonna cool. be interesting. I mean, the the the, the, the seems to be. I mean, if that's if it's Taika, okay. You think they're gonna it, Taika's the gonna be the voice of King Shark? Because. I mean, I mean that seems to be the consensus out there. Um, he he was uh, said to be in the movie, but he's not a squad member. And uh, one thing I heard, I don't know, I don't, I didn't hear it, so it's secondhand. Um, was that Steve um, Agee or, or whoever, how you ever you pronounce his last name, um, was the onset yeah. uh, guy for King Shark. Um, they didn't specify that he was on set and the voice. So, yeah. So I, I kind of figured that the guy, yeah, was just, uh, uh, what do you call it? He was just going to be the on set body motion capture, all that stuff. Yeah. Uh, so. so. Yeah, that's what that's what it seems to um, that's what people seem to think is that Taika is going to be the voice because he is in the movie. He he was on the cast list. the the big The big reveal they had a while back, where it was just uh, every every cast member of the movie. Yeah. So um, I mean, unless for some reason you know he's playing the villain who. We know nothing about, which is obviously possible. Um, yeah, you know who the villain is going to be? It's going to be his character from Green Lantern. He's going to be like. Character. Oh, yeah. The uh, Hal's, uh, Hal's uh, best friend. Hal's friend. Yeah, Hal's friend. Yeah, he's going to be like, I'm the villain. Yeah, that, that's that's going to be it. I keep. I keep forgetting that that was him. 
that's the first time I saw him in anything. So, yeah, I remember it. Wait. Well, you know that movie was 2011. So I mean that was that was nine years ago now. I know. So, um, um, yeah, the, uh, the, they've got images. I mean, they graced, so the Suicide Squad graced the, the cover of Empire, and then they've got some, um, you know, screen, screen images, screenshots from the show, from the movie, and, um, like, there's one in, in, uh, in a transport, and they've got Harley and Javelin and Weasels there. And um, I think Blackguard was there. Uh, maybe Most, TDK. It's going to be the opening scene <laughs> because it's all like people that we figure are going to get killed except Harley. <laughs> right. It, it very well could be, you know. Uh, I feel uh, like Harley goes with goes out with the team with like this opening team and she's like the only one who walks away. The rest of them just die in brutal ways. I feel like that's a James Gunn thing. Like that's possible. Like he's got his all of his friends in there as characters. Like, hey, you just want to come shoot this cameo for me? It's gonna be this. Yeah, sure, James. No problem. You know, like they're gonna have this big elaborate team that all just get annihilated. Right. You're in this op- Yeah, you're in this opening action scene, and everybody but Harley's gonna die, and we're just gonna pick you off in these like creative and like gruesome ways. <laughs> and I mean that. So- I mean, they're probably like, yeah, sure. I mean, have you seen Slither before? Like, yeah. Um, I mean, there there is speculation out there that um, Starro, Starro the Conqueror, is going to be the villain. That's cool. I think that'd be kind of fun. I mean, it's definitely a little bit of a difference. I mean, technically, technically, James, if we want to get into it. This is the Suicide Squad post-crisis. It is post-crisis, so it, it could definitely be a different, um, a, a different world. Uh, Starro, even though, I mean, Starro is for being an alien entity. He's he's vulnerable, you know, um, as opposed to like the all powerful enchantress you know where she yeah. was like bulletproof and phased by nothing yet somehow they beat her with their fists yeah they just, um, she just stood there and like, <laughs> gyrated in front of something that made no sense because the whole third act plot was changed in post yeah 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 um so just the the but Starro is is actually even though he's alien, he's actually vulnerable. Um, it doesn't take like it doesn't take the Justice League to to stop him. I mean, he was the first threat that the Justice League faced. Or no, was that the Appalachians? It was Starro. It was pretty close. Yeah, it was Starro. The Appalachians was something else. They were Justice League related. Maybe they were Justice Society. I don't remember. Um. But, uh, I mean, if you consider, like, Young Justice, like, Starro was on Earth, you know, thousands of years ago, and Vandal Savage and, and his sons and stuff stopped Starro. Yep, uh, and then turned him to... So, and that, I mean, that means he was stopped by, like, arrows and swords and, you know, ancient weaponry and stuff. So, I mean... If, for uh, for a lot of you know knowledge like this is a villain that could that the suicide co- squad could stop by by fighting being most the mostly these um street level type super villains you know they, they there are still powers and things involved but you know they're not justice league caliber no that's why i always think it's weird when they're like the suicide squad versus the justice league i'm like really you know, it's not like the Legion of Doom where it's kind of like each member of the Justice League's greatest villain <laughs> versus them. Yeah. Yeah, this 
Suicide Squad versus the Justice League, that would be like a psychological battle. You would have to take the Justice League down a peg, um, like get them, I don't even know, like uh, like magic Mommy? to weaken Superman and, and, I mean, all this other stuff. It would take a lot of stuff to weaken the Justice League for any version of the Suicide Squad pretty much to even stand a chance. So that's cool. Like I, I, I mean, I love how James Gunn was able to like make the the correct style of Harley, and makes it look so easy and flawless. Like, hey, here's what, here's what this Harley should look like. There you go. You've seen her in two movies, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and here in her third film, we'll actually do it correct. But all right, keeping with that, into the last bit of film information is. So we, we learned through Zack Snyder that his Justice League is officially called Zack Snyder's Justice League. We learned that he's going to do additional photography. We've learned that they are shooting with Ben, Ray Fisher, Amber Heard. Um, but now we've learned that somebody else has joined those shoots. And this is, like I said, additional photography, not reshoots. Don't interchange those people. Reshoots is when you, you know, redo a scene or have to shoot some things to connect scenes to make up for mistakes, errors, you know, a lot of changes. His film was done. Now they're adding footage to it. And we are getting Mr. Jared Leto back as the Joker. Awesome. That's pretty sweet. You know, um, and it hasn't been confirmed, but it is a big rumor that I do believe is, and I say this just to, to bring this about, is Joe Magnanello is supposed to be back shooting some scenes as Deathstroke. I mean, that probably gets me more excited than Jared Leto, but I'm definitely excited to see Jared Leto um, come back. Um, I mean, honestly, in my opinion, the only thing that um, the only thing that pushed Jared Leto over the edge a little bit. And I I like Jared Leto's performance and I wish there was more um, was just how how much like into style he was. all his different suits, uh, his freaking big old purple puffy coat with no shirt on underneath. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, I maybe too many wardrobe changes, but um, and and maybe too too far in in a direction. Um, and it's hard. It's funny to stay too far with Joker, but um, uh. I just, I, and I don't see that changing, you know, with Zack Snyder. Like, like I don't see, I don't see him toning down the, the Joker from what David Ayer did. Um, no, I don't either. I just, you know, Jared Leto's Joker performance is lost on the cutting room floor. Um, yeah. I'm hoping with this with this edition, we will get maybe it opened up to the air cut of Suicide Squad. Yeah, there's a lot of speculation in that. Um, the in- fact that David Ayer posted that he watched his cut since the first time, uh, or the first time since 2016, um, and how he said it's effing amazing. Um, and I mean, there's only so many reasons that he's watching his cut. You know what I mean? Especially after four years, right? Cause I mean, it's- maybe because there's interest. Yeah, and and they're bringing Leto back to shoot additional photography, which you know is is that. I mean, maybe they're building up more of a HBO Max universe. Maybe there's going to be more. Maybe they're they're going to allow David Ayer to finish his movie, and that way, at least the DCEU that had come out prior up to Justice League will be a more cohesive unit and draw more fans in. Yeah. I mean, post justice league right now, all we have are birds of prey, which still kind of what works, you know, as a after suicide squad, but it's not, it's very loose, you know, um, because 
I want to see how The Suicide Squad ties into that because of where Harley was in that movie. Like, she was kind of walking kind of free for someone you think Amanda Waller would be hunting, but whatever. Um, Shazam, which is, you know, a step removed, but it references things, so it's good. And then Aquaman works either in or out of what we had come before. So we're pretty good, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I, I do feel like Zack Snyder's Justice League is saying, hey, this is a big payoff, big, like, what we were supposed to do, send out. Like, you know, he's, I don't know if he's building to Justice League 2 or if he's just trying to find a way to tie up threads that maybe were a little loose that they've said, hey, we're just going to end it here. So he's like, all right, let me let me finish it correctly. Let me put a cap on it all. And that's what they're doing. Yeah. There could be a number of reasons for everything that's going on, and it's all behind the scenes. Um, you know, the the movie that was going to be released in the theaters was uh, two two fourteen, uh, two hundred two hundred um, fourteen minutes, uh, and the movie he's releasing now. Uh, the the four episode series that it's going to be now on HBO Max is going to be even longer. So, you know, breaking it up, making it a mini uh, a mini series the way they're doing it. Um, I mean, it's it's different than a movie. So, I mean, the ideas of shooting some additional photography to um, help it fit the the episodic structure um, is necessary. And then you know he gets to he gets to add. Uh, he gets to add things in or things back into what he wanted to do before he was forced to change it so much, even to what he was going to release before the executives actually got their hands on it after he had left the project. Exactly. All right. Moving on. Stargirl season two, as of this past Monday, started filming. So, yay. Yay. We got some casting for Eclipso and Shade, um, which is kind of funny because uh, the actor, I believe, that's playing, is it Eclipso? Is the actor that played Digger Harkness on yes. Arrow? So Captain Boomerang is back <laughs> as Eclipso now? Yep. Uh, Jonathan Cake has been cast as the Shade. The, it's Shade was like the character last time that totally forgot was there just because of how quick he is and he was there the whole time and we were looking at him but never really noticed and then they pulled that I always saw him in the picture right right I always saw him in the painting every single time I always saw him in the painting I was like oh of course yeah there's uh you know there's the shade there's another um character and uh I just when they when they pulled that out as as the the stinger for the j uh for the isa uh at the end i was like oh yeah <laughs> i was like that's cool like i'm glad they finally brought him out oh yeah it was awesome you know, or, or that they referenced that he's because he's always been there but they finally made a reference to him <laughs> i'm i have faith you know i have i have a lot of faith that this will be done you know i'm gonna keep the faith like Black Lightning films in Georgia. Some, you know, they're going to keep filming in Georgia for Stargirl. Um, even though it's CW now, I'm hoping with like the CW, DC Universe, HBO Max kind of thing that it'll still be produced more from the HBO Max previous DC Universe, but just put on CW. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I hope the I hope the the production team is still is still the same people who who developed and are working on the show. But the CW is now like, yeah, we want it on our network, so we're gonna foot a, foot a little bit of the bill, you know. But I, you know, not I just, not necessarily make. I mean, the writing team and stuff their own. Because <laughs> in I mean, in a way, like that would kill the show. You know, they're they're losing one you know superhero female show. Supergirl ending, and now they're gaining this show because you know when Super, when Star Girl was on, it was it aired pretty much like at the end of the regular runs of everything. 
But also, we learned today that Jade is joining the cast of Star Trek. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm, I'm guessing the name. Uh, I'm try and pronounce it. Better it, you Issa, than me. Issa Pane- Panerho. Pe- Panerho. Good job, buddy. Um, Better than me. <laughs> yeah, she is playing Jade, uh, daughter of Alan Scott. Which which makes uh, sense. Po- yes, and she pre- she possesses the what is it Star Heart energy? Um, is that what it's called? I believe. I am trying to remember. I'm wondering if, how they're going to go with her. Um. I'm wondering if with her now it's we're going to get our more Green Lantern story and like bringing the Lantern back to life. Um, so I'm really, you know, I'm excited. Brian finally will have his Green Lantern in some yeah, way, right. shape, or form so he can calm down. Oh, yeah. He, he, uh, he got super excited. Um. Uh. When it when I showed him, or when I. So I don't think I don't think he recognized the character, and then he and then I think he looked her up, and then when he realized that she was Alan Scott's daughter, and that she was, you know, a a version of a lantern in some way, or some fashion or another. How does he not know that? Because didn't Kyle Rayner like fall in love and date her? In the comments, like Did, uh, that, I'm that I'm not sure about. I don't, I only know of her. I only know of her from a um, actually from Dynamic Duel. They just they recently had an uh, episode with Alan Scott, and they were discussing his background, and they did talk about her, and they talked about the the Star Heart, uh, I believe, like I said, is, is the name um, energy that. Alan Scott possesses uh, that it's a that it's different than than the green um, green energy of the will po- of willpower. Mm. So it'll be it'll be cool to have that at least, and it makes the most sense being you know Earth Two and the JSA. So I'm excited about that. All right, keep trugging along this train of justice. Um, Superman and Lois did officially start filming on the 21st. Um, there was some stuff we had to wait on, but they cast another LL. And this time it is a villain, female, whose name evades me as my notes are gone that had her information, but she fought Supergirl. And her name was something with an L and something with an L. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because, that, that is true. <laughs> I'm see if I can pull it up because <laughs> my notes are gone. Um, but I just, you know, it's so hilarious to me. I feel like it's a writer's rite of passage to create a new character with an LL alliteration. Like, it's like, all right, you're on the book. Okay, I got to do this. And... Boom, you know, we got a great one in um, Superman uh, Earth One. You know, that was uh, one that I can't remember because my notes were erased off my phone. Um, Oh, man, you know what? We were talking about that um, yesterday, and I should have broke out my friggin' Earth One book. Um, Uh, Leslie Lawker. Yep, I just pulled it up. (laughs) <laughs> Stacy <laughs> Stacy Farber has been cast as Leslie Lar in a recurring role on Superman and Lois. So let, let's let's run down it. What we got? Leslie Lar. But like, but like you, well, but like you said, she was in a Supergirl book at some point. So yeah. it's not like, I mean, obviously this this character is probably going to be different than the um, than that version and. As well, like they couldn't have brought that girl into Supergirl, like they they drew all of Superman's villains as opposed to Supergirl villains for her show. 
Yeah. And now we got a Superman show, and we're going to use a Supergirl villain. Yeah, they're like, they're like, they're like, hey, hey, guess what? Now, they're like, we're going to steal your villains. Okay, so the actress who's playing this character, I'm looking at her real quick. She uh, comes from another CW show, the short-lived CW series show called Cult, that ran in 2013. She was on it, uh, which was a pretty cool show. It didn't last, and I, I don't know how it could have, like, the density of that show. Um, but, yeah, it was, a, uh, it was an interesting show. So that's cool. So she's not, you know, unknown to the CW world. But she is coming, and like we were talking about the other day, it's like you get on a Superman property, you're like, okay, what new LL can I come up with? So let's just let's just run them down. What we got? Okay, we got Lois Lane. Okay, all right, Lucy Lane. All right, what was her mom's name? Uh, oh, oh, what was it? Keep going. I'll think of it. Okay, so we jump up. We got Lana <laughs> Lang, and then her father was Lewis. Lang and then her mother I don't remember well and Lisa LaSalle was the was the um, yes on girl Superman. from Superman Earth 1 yes and then Leslie Lamaris was the mermaid a landing mermaid person and then we have thanks to Smallville we have a very large Luther family we have Lex Luther then we have Lachlan Luther, Lillian Luther, Lucas Luther, Lionel Luther, and then we got Lutessa Luther. Oh, and then Lena Luther, which is a comics and Supergirl kind of thing. And we got Julian, which never made any sense. I mean, technically Lex is Alexander, but still. Um, who else? Are we missing anyone well, else? Lois's, Lois's mother's name is Ella. Mm. It's E. It's E L L A. But yeah. it's. I mean. I mean, it's pretty sweet, you know. I think we got them all. Maybe there's probably some more we forgot. Um. There is just way too many L L names in Superman, in Superman lore. I mean, they just, they just had fun with it. They're like, "Hey, let's just keep going." Um, yeah, now, now it's like there has to be multiple LLs. Yeah, now, now they're like, "Watch this! I got another one for you." So that's cool. All right, so moving on to the big ones. Ready? We got. We know that Titans season three is filming. We got some behind the scenes photos of. Uh, Jason Todd and Dick Grayson. We've yet to get any kind yeah, of we casting. Got a, a posting today about episode three and four um, that they're filming. So we've got no casting announcement of Scarecrow or Barbara Gordon. But we did get our first show. Hey, Solomon. Hi, Dad. So I'm about to show you something really awesome, okay? It's something that you are really excited. I want to catch your reaction. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Are you watching? Yeah. <gasps> it's red hood. Look at that. Look, look, look at the picture on the screen. Oh. What do you think? He's awesome. Where's he from? That is Red Hood for Titan Season 3. Really? Yeah. I like his helmet. Yeah? What else? His jacket looks awesome. Like, I like the... Yeah, this, he looks awesome. <laughs> That's the best video that i ever seen. You know what the boots? That, that's what the boots look like? Yeah, what do you think of Red Hood? Awesome. See? And he looks <gasps> awesome. 
yeah it, it's a it's a perfect suit um no, nothing nothing about any suits that that titans has done has been anything less than so oh i mean titans I mean, has been hitting the mark i mean honestly like i love how they were able honestly if we had to pick one suit that's like the weakest suit that they did i think it might be kind of jason todd's robin suit because when you look at it in the light it looks a little clunkyish but I love how they did two Robin suits, both different, but yet very similar. Uh, uh-huh. The bat suit was more of a stunt bat suit, so I don't really count it as like a full on bat suit, but it still looks better than the bat suit we got for Gotham. Um, yeah, yeah, it was, it was totally kept in shadow. It was, it was all, it was never meant to be uh, face first in front of the camera, you know. Um, and. I would I would just like more suit action. I mean that's that's part of the fun of these comic book properties and these comic book shows is seeing the actors in costume, seeing them brought to life. Um you know, season two, like you know, you know I've talked about before, season two of Titans did a lot of things better than season one. Um, but that still had a season two especially had a rough start because of the way they botched the end of season one and then had an odd end. Um, so I think in a lot of ways they drug out the whole Dick to Nightwing thing too long. But back to Jason Todd. Um, the red hood looks great. The tactical pants, the shins, the boots, the pistols, the jacket, the body armor, the actual hood, the helmet... Like I, 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 the only thing I don't like about the helmet is how it kind of looks like he has a mouth. Um, just uh, looks almost kind of Doctor Doomish, Iron Manish. Um, yeah, they as the as the as Red Hood has become more popular um, since Jason God's return and since his New Fifty Two run and then his Rebirth run, which the Rebirth run was was very highly talked about. Um, supposed to be very good i haven't gotten to the rebirth run yet of I, red start, hood. I started um, it just to see if where rebirth like red hood and the outlaws rebirth picks up if maybe there's clues to where three jokers would have ended with jason just as we were trying to uh, figure that out um so i've read yeah. some of it i don't like in rebirth how they did his helmet with more of a mouth to it i like more of the plain front to the yeah. red hood right I mean, I haven't gotten to that, so I'm not sure, like, exactly what you mean there. But um, what I was more getting to is the, the popularity that he is, that he's garnered over the last um, decade has really, um, uh, like, his, his helmet has become, like, functional in different ways. Um uh, and and in different mediums like like in Arkham Knight when his when his hood, the helmet had like a heads up display on the inside and stuff like that you know yeah um I uh, what do you call it I'm not a I fan don't think it of- needs to be like that you know I, that's obviously a story thing that people they make things overcomplicated part of the thing with the bat family and stuff yeah they have gadgets and stuff but it's also it's not like it's not like iron man with with jarvis inside or friday inside um and that's one thing i didn't like with i mean it made for a good dynamic in like spider-man homecoming and and the mcu spider-man where he's got a heads-up display and stuff but it's like that was never that's never been Spider-Man's thing, especially early on, like early on. It was him getting the job done. Yeah. You know, not having all this super high tech stuff to help him along stuff that he didn't develop himself. Um, I don't like the way Jason looks right now. He looks like he's like the Red Hood. Like, I get it, but he looks like he's a Mortal Kombat character right now. Yeah, this red this this Red Hood Outlaw book that he that he's in or whatever. Like he's I al- definitely haven't gotten to any of that. He's always been in Red Hood and the Outlaws. Like that's been his kind of book. Um, and they've done a unique job with like doing different characters in it. But yeah, where he is right now, like I 
don't like the costume. But I'm I'm he's excited. He's kind of got the hood on. He's got a face like a face mask, like you said, like a, a Mortal Kombat face mask cover, um, with with a domino mask on. So it's not it's not the whole red helmet anymore. I like the red helmet, and I like when his domino Me mask too. under the helmet is um, like a red domino mask instead of the black. But um, I'm excited to see what they do with Jason as the Red Hood. Um, it just feels like once you introduce Jason Todd as a Robin, it's like, oh, we got to get him to Red Hood. That's that's his ultimate. That's his destination. And what I think is funny is you and I just had a conversation about how Dick Grayson in the comics, I think when they draw him, like he's always more of like this lean, uh, leaner muscle He's an acrobat, and they've started really drawing Jason as, like, this beefier, muscular, like, big guy. And then the actor that plays Jason is, like, super skinny. And that's the only thing is, like, when you look at him in the costume, like, you can tell he is super skinny. Uh, I kind of see what you mean about the, the the face almost looks like it has a mouth. It- Almost makes the hood, the the helmet look like it's got a face on the helmet, kind of a thing. Yeah, I did. I did. I do like how the new Red Hood, though he does carry a crowbar. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh kind of twisted, but it works. Right. <laughs> but that that is cool. I mean, he looks great. Um, I really can't wait to see what they do. I hope that. You know, we have, like I said, we haven't got the casting of a Barbara Gordon, but we know she's coming or Scarecrow. And I hope they do some sort of a flashback episode and we see Barbara as Batgirl and get a really cool updated new Batgirl costume. Just like, you know, in season two of Titans, we got Aqualad in an episode and he got a full on costume and everything and it looked great. But we haven't had a good Batgirl suit since the repurposed, redesigned Alicia Silverstone costume they use for Birds of Prey. And that was in a quick, like, blink blink flashback scene, you know? Yeah. Uh, it, was, it was a flashback scene, and then she wore it, like, in a dream sequence or something. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it looked fantastic, the, the repurposed suit. They redid the cowl, and Dina Meyer was fantastic. She was amazing. Um, unlikely she'll be back as Barbara Gordon, although they did say she's Commissioner Barbara Gordon, but I think she's a little older for that uh, role now. Yeah. She did kind of come back as the voice in Crisis for Barbara, for Oracle, uh, but that was it. Yeah. Um, so that would be kind of cool. Cause it seems like, and once again, if you're, if you're thinking this through, if Jason has now become red hood, that opens up the possibilities for a Tim Drake and actually having a good stable Robin. And then we'll just build the bat family up on Titans and have, we have Nightwing, red hood, bat girl, and then a Robin. And then over on CW, we have Batwoman. And we have our new Batwoman. And we got our reveal of our new Batwoman. First, first we got her new ride. Her new Batwoman mobile. Is it still the Batmobile or is it the Batwoman mobile? Like, but I think know, Batmobile is still. <laughs> it's, it's a car. It sounds awkward when you call it. Yeah. The woman mobile. Mm, right. But it's if that, if that isn't feminist. <laughs> um, it looks good. You know, it's like, like a it's one step, you know, where Ruby just used a motorcycle. She has a car now and it's got a little cool fin to it. So it's it's neat to see that kind of in action because this character is um, of Ryan Wilder's branching out into her own character. Um, so we got to see her car, which look, it looks good. And then we did remember we, we did speculate on the behind the scenes photo we saw of her, and then we did get a behind the scenes photo. It looks like once again, kind of the way Ruby kind of did it in the first episode or two, we're gonna see her wearing rubies 
previous Batwoman, Kate's Batwoman's costume. And then she'll get her own. And man, does her own costume look dope. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks better. It's a it's a better reveal uh, than Ruby's. And, and uh, reveal uh, Ruby's nailed it, too. Um, the belt looks better. I like the the red gauntlets more. They, they've highlighted the red more. Like her, the, the symbol looks more pronounced. Like you said, the red gauntlets are red. It's not like accented red. Uh, the belt looks more like a utility belt with a bat on it. Um, her cape looks like it has more red in it. Um, we don't see her boots, so we don't know what the boots like. Even her costume design looks like it's more padded and textured compared to just more of like, you know, Ruby suit almost looked more like a body armor or bo- under body. I can't talk. More like a body suit, and this looks more like a armored costume, just in like the design. Um, one thing that's really interesting to point out is she doesn't have the black makeup around her eyes in the pictures we see her. And then she has a, her hair is red, but it looks like it has a red weave in it. And we're all kind of speculating that she's going to have short hair again. And this is the new wig uh, based on how we saw her wear Ruby's wig. And the actress, when we've seen her, she looks like she's had shorter hair. Like when we saw her back at fandom, but you know, hair can be cut, but not grown as fast. Yeah. Well, you know, when it comes to movies and things like that, they just pull back and pin the hair back and they throw whatever hairstyle they want on a person. So, uh, I think her suit looks awesome. Like, I think it's a much better suit. Um, I'm interested to see how they incorporate her into the, the mold, the, uh, the already established universes, you know, like we got this big kind of tease of like the Justice League at the end, you know, the start of the Justice League um, with two Kryptonians, Black Lightning, Martian Manhunter, uh, the, Flash, the Flash and Batwoman. And now we don't have the same Batwoman anymore. So I don't really think they're going to bring her in, you know, like, hey, person we've never met. You know, there's no <laughs> Archer. In the in the league because that went out the window, you know, because they're definitely they have not, they haven't really come out and said they're not doing it, but everyone's kind of been shh, Green Arrow and the Canaries, shh, we'll just forget about that. Yeah, like we'll yeah, just, they definitely sh- haven't picked it up, but um, and I, I'm at the point now I don't think they're going to. No, not it, unless not unless they make it like uh, maybe like a small mini series to wrap up that storyline that made that didn't make a whole lot of sense and the fact that they wasted one episode of arrow's final season to do that yeah Um, they missed they messed up the naming uh for the penultimate episode that they've been doing every single season um they used the penultimate episode to do a spinoff pilot and um yeah, it just yeah, let me say is is a wasted episode because it had nothing it added nothing to the story of Arrow, the season uh the finale of the 8th season and yeah, it was just for they, not, if they have if they don't pick it up, it's it is a it is a waste. It is cuz they spent so much time building up his daughter, him and Felicity's daughter, him and you know and so it just kind of was like, uh, like, you know, you, you really held on to this for a long period of time. And, you know, I mean, unless they did something like just brought her, don't do the show, but maybe bring her in for the crossover as like the green arrow of, you know, the justice league or whatever for, you know, if they ever, we ever get another crossover. Cause you know, for the rumor was going to be, that it was going to be a Batwoman Supergirl type crossover or, and now that's definitely going to you've, – you've completely destroyed the relationship between Kate and Kara. And, you know, I like the idea that they were both the cousins of the bigger heroes, you know, because we always got Supergirl and Batgirl paired up, you know. But the idea of Batwoman being Bruce's cousin and she's Clark's cousin, you know, I thought that was a really cool, you know, 
um, you know, playground to sandbox to get into, and that's gone. So I feel like we're just going to kind of drop some of the storylines that we were building to because there's not a lot of room for them. But we covered it. We got it all. That's all the the hip, cool news. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to throw out there, James? Um, uh, no. No, I, I don't think so. I think we covered just about all the news that I can think of that I have down. All right. Uh, we'll be, like I said, we'll be back with our regular scheduled programming here shortly. And just remember, dear listeners. Look up in the sky. Look up in the sky. Look in the sky.